Hi, I'm Ben Bardis, the incident meteorologist for the Dixie Fire on the West Zone. I just want to provide a weather update for today since we've got an active weather pattern coming in. Uh, this morning we were hot and we're dry, but that's quickly going to change here around midday. We've got a cold front out to our west uh, that'll be working its way across the fire this afternoon and tonight. So looking at our map here, uh, we've got a cold front that's going to sweep in from the west. Uh, it's mainly going to be up by Oregon, uh, but the tail end of it's going to come down and reach us here uh, down into northern California. So we'll see that sweep across the fire. Uh, overnight tonight is when we expect that cold front passage. Ahead of that, we'll see an increased chance of thunderstorms this afternoon with some isolated thunderstorms possible over the fire. The main push will be early hours tomorrow morning with those storms, so we'll have a squall line of storms come through with some rain, some more isolated thunder possible with that. And as that cold front moves off to the north and the east overnight, we can expect some winds to increase uh, pretty well uh, behind that front. And we'll actually see an uptick of winds ahead of the front as well, I should say, this afternoon. So southwest winds across the fire and uh, areas around the fire this afternoon, and an increase of winds as possible uh, with winds as possible as high as 40 miles per hour uh, tomorrow morning behind that cold frontal passage. And also we're going to watch for some gusty erratic winds and lightning, uh, of course, with those thunderstorms pushing through. So an active weather pattern here uh, this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow morning. And we're going to be watching that closely here on the fire. Thanks. Good morning. Don Watt, Fire Behavior Analyst for CAL FIRE and SMASH Team 1. So you heard from the weather. It's going to be a very dynamic day, so we're starting out warm and dry, so we'll start seeing some fire activity increase early today. As, as winds increase, they'll continue to increase the fire activity. So especially on the northern section of the fire, where it made a, a decent run yesterday, we're expecting to see that activity continue. And it's going to be pushing across the fire, so it's going to want to keep pushing it to the northeast. And that's going to possibly put some fire above on the Hat Creek Rim. The good thing right now is with the general pattern is it wants to push around Old Station. However, with the thunderstorms, we could see some outflows, which may move the fire westward if they line up in the, over the fire and collapse. Uh, if that happens, then there may be a higher threat for Old Station. But the fire activity right now continues wants to go to the northeast. We're going to see some significant fire runs today with some spotting. And that's going to be the issue for today. Good morning. Tony Brandell, CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 1, Deputy Operations. I'm going to start down here in the lower section. This is the Butte Sector Branch 1, 5, and 7. We're in patrol right now, looking very, very good. No issues. Branch 9, held yesterday very well. No issues in there. Still patrol and mop up. We do have an area in here it's called Stump Branch. We have some fire in a little, uh, what we're calling the peat bog. It's a little marshy area. We're still working that out. So as they explained, this is going to be our hot spot today. We're looking at some pretty significant weather coming in. The fire's in alignment, the fuels are dry, and the weather's there. So with the fuel being as dry as it is, we're expecting long-range spotting. We're expecting erratic fire behavior. That's why in abundance of precaution yesterday, we evacuated Old Station. It's not so much the wind direction from our wind that's going to be mainly from the southwest. We're concerned about the, the thunder cells coming in. With the thunder cells, it builds up. It, it mainly sucking in air, but as it starts to mature and it starts to kind of deplete, it pushes air down and it will follow those drainages. And once it, it gets in the right spot, it can follow drainages down and push the fire back towards Old Station. That's what we're mainly concerned about. Branch 16, we had a little spot outside of it yesterday. This is in alignment also with the wind. We're concerned it's going to get out over there. But keep in mind, we have a lot of resources up there to protect the structures. Around Old Station, the fixed wings boxed it in with what we call retardant. We'll keep the fire safe. It's all been masticated around the structures and there's a lot of clearance around structures, so we're looking pretty good. Nothing's ever guaranteed. 2018, the campfire. Most of the structures we lost in the campfire were from sparks, not so much the flaming front. So Division S and T is looking very well. No issues in there today or yesterday. Uh, Mountain Meadows, still a lot of spot fires out in that lake. We're working on it. It's a dry lake bed. Um, it's going to be, continue to be a problem probably until it gets a significant amount of rain. Lake Elmer is looking good. Highway 36 quarter is looking good. Janesville, every day we're making better and better progress in there. We're hoping once this finger down here gets buttoned up a little bit better, we'll be able to release some of the evacuation orders that are in Janesville. Yesterday, the, the fire on the escarpment on the 395 corridor got wind tested. We had no escape. We have a line from basically the dozer line up to Black Mountain. It held very well yesterday. We're looking better there. We just need to hold through the wind event. From Black Mountain down into Squaw Peak, 
It held yesterday. We got mop up about 200 feet inside the line, but it isn't done yet. We still have to do a little more pushing there, but we're looking very good on the bottom side in the, on the east zone. So keep an eye on the weather. Be ready to go. Ready, set, go. If we ask you to leave, please leave. Thank you.